Hey folks, how's it going? Today I'm excited to talk to you about the Warrior Talents, specifically for the ARM spec, um, for both Mythic Plus uh, rating, and we're going to touch on Open World Contact as well. Um, overall, for ARM's Warriors, the rotation's pretty unchanged, um, but there's been some changes in terms of incorporating Mortal Strike into the execution phase um, in order to maintain your, your mastery buff, so we can talk about that in detail a little bit um, but before we dive really deep into that let's uh, let's just touch on the the meat of the content right away so you can see you've got a, a tree up right up here in front of us um, there's a couple different components you can go with as far as just open PV content if you're you're out in the world um, ahead of questing in Shadowlands itself during the pre-patch um, Here's the build you want to go with. Tier 1, War Machine is totally viable for, for some PvE stuff. Especially if you're new to Arms Warrior, this is an easy go-to. Uh, tier 2, Double Time, it gives you that improvement in terms of overall mobility. And having a, a second charge is pretty good. Um, additionally, Intervene is, has kind of come over from the Prot Warrior spec and, uh, and Fury and arms both uh, both have that. So our mobility is definitely improved. Um, for me personally, if I'm out in open world, now I rarely play without war mode on. Um, I typically go with Stormbolt. I like having a go-to when it comes to a, a significant stun. So that's that's your recommendations between between double time for the increase to mobility because ARMS is still not the fastest spec out there, um, or Stormbolt, and that'll that'll impact your ability to knock down opponents, but also uh, your ability to, to stay alive, alive if you do get ambushed. Um, tier 3, Fever of Battle is the way to go. Uh, tier 4, Bounding Stride, like no, no material change there. Um, after that, we're going with cleave. Like that's that's kind of the the absolute winner. You you actually want to prioritize cleave um, above warbreaker, and we can talk about that. Um, but it's also going to lend itself to a bit of a discussion around uh, some changes in terms of the AOE target caps that that all specs are are kind of embracing as we go into Shadowlands here. Uh, tier six, you're going to go with in for the kill. Um, I I can make a case. I really like Avatar. I think that complements every spec as far as warriors go. Um, but getting a, a boost to your haste um, actually makes a pretty substantial improvement. There's, we don't have a, a lot of skill in, or a lot of abilities in our warrior kit that, that have the ability to, to knock up a, a secondary stat for us so much. Especially recognizing the the importance of secondaries as we get into Shadowlands itself. And then finally, the, the build would suggest for some open world questing, um, Dreadnought for Tier 7. So having a, a second overpower, um, yeah, it makes a, a pretty solid difference in terms of our ability um, just to maximize the damage we get from our Mortal Strike attack. So keep that in mind. That's a lot of fun and an easy way to play. Now, if you're wondering, cool, that's great. Like, talk to me. What's the new Mythic Plus build? Um, it, it's actually pretty identical to what we had observed from BFA. The difference is primarily being, yep, we're we're not doing War Machine. We're going to kick with Skull Splitter as it is right now. No material change. Um, again, like your double time or your sto Storm Bolt. That's just a utility choice that comes down to you, or maybe the group you're in. Um, Fever Battle, no change there. Tier 4, you're actually going to see a little bit of a difference, and this is bringing back a little bit of our go-to, but just our defensive stance. As far as arms go, always a, a lot of fun as we kick that through. Um, I know with Corruptions, going back to your defensive stance is going to feel a fair bit more painful and slower than usual. Um, but our survivability hasn't materially improved that much from BFA. So really recommend this for your Mythic Plus build. 
Uh, tier 5 cleave remains kind of the go-to, um, relying on cleave and th this is where you're going to see a little bit of change from the open world content. In for the kill for tier 6, but anchor management for tier 7. And, and actually having a passive ability that's increasing the amount of, yeah, Colossus smashes and blade storms. Like that's that's absolutely fantastic. That's a big big part of our kit. Um, Warbreaker does have some potential, as opposed to Rock and Cleave, um, but but it actually just comes down to the the target cap and some of the mastery value for longer cooldowns, which actually starts to make Warbreaker uh, a little less attractive, which is kind of unfortunate because I've I've really enjoyed Warbreaker. I like the thought of arms um, bringing a pretty heavy swing here. So keep that in mind. That's that's the recommended build for what we're looking at in this. Um, alternatively, hey, that's really cool. Um, alternatively, an option that we could look at for the raid build is just around rend itself. So in single target, Rend is actually performed really well, um, a little bit better than other options. But uh, Fever Battle remains more of a simple option, and it performs better when you have other targets that that are involved and that are available. So touch on that really quick. Again, if you're in a raid, you're going to stick with Skull Splitter. Um, double time if you want it, if you prefer the mobility. Um, tier 3, here's the difference. For raiding, we go with Rend. Um, you can keep defensive stance if you so desire, stick with cleave, in for the kill, and anger management. That's going to kind of make us the punchiest that we can possibly be in, in the short term. So keep that uh, keep that under consideration. That's kind of the, the builds I'd, I'd recommend going with for open world contact, content, mythic plus, and some of the raid work in the end term. Um, as far as stats go, we still want to continue to prioritize haste above all else, and then critical strike and mastery. That's kind of the, the major push for arms as we jump into pre-patch. Um, one thing that I will give a shout out, if you're not as familiar with some of the substantial changes that we've seen with our toolkit, um, Warrior has picked up spell reflection across some of its other specs beyond protection. And I think this is such an impactful ability. Like, yep, being able to reduce magical damage, that's great because we don't have a lot of defensives in our kit, especially for arms. Um, but being actually able to reflect a spell back will be an, a tremendous quality of life improvement. So take advantage of that. Jump all over it. Um, that's it for now, folks. Let me know. Are you playing arms this this actual expansion? Are you leaning towards Fury potentially or Protection? Or is it time for you to go in a completely different direction? And are you thinking about a different class out there? Um, yeah, let me know the content and, and your thoughts on it. And I will speak with you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.